Okay, I'd like to call uh, this afternoon's meeting of the Orange County Transportation Council to order. I'm just going to start um, by doing a roll call. So I'll read off the names of uh, the voting members and we just ask that the members present, whether uh, here by proxy or in person or online, just to uh, acknowledge your presence. So starting with um, I'm Alan Sorensen, uh, Commissioner of Planning and also the MPO Director. I uh, have a proxy today representing uh, County Executive student Steve Newhouse. Uh, do we have anyone from uh, the New York State Department of Transportation? Yes, I'm here. Well, hi, it's Sandra Johnson. I'm on the call, and then Caitlin Holt should be in person. Oh, yes, she is. Yes. Welcome. On uh, New York State Thruway Authority. Uh, Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Yes, this is Catherine Corliss representing uh, the MTA virtually. Catherine, welcome. Thank you. Uh, City of Newburgh. Jason Morris. <clears throat> uh, City of Middletown. Jacob Dooley. Uh, City of Port Jervis. Tim Farr, Port Jervis engineer. Welcome. Uh, Town of Crawford, I think I saw Charlie on the, online uh, a moment ago, maybe not. Town, Town of Crawford, we can come back. Uh, Town of Newburgh. Here, Scott Manley. Scott. Town of Warwick. Here, Mike Free. Mike. Town of Monroe. Um, Town of Deer Park. Here, Gary Spears. Gary. Uh, Village of Walden. Here, Town of Walden. And Village of Curious Joel. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, and so we'll, we'll get right to business. Uh, first, I'll start off with the. We're going to do introductions around the room. For um, to... I guess, yeah, we could do. Uh, introductions um, for those members present. Um, Alan Sorensen, uh, Commissioner of Planning of the Air Director. Jacob Tawil, Commissioner of Public Works, City of Middletown. Scott Manley, Deputy Supervisor, Town of Newburgh. Aaron Spears, Supervisor, Town of Deer Park. Chris Reed, Supervisor, Town of War. Jason Morris, Commissioner of Public Works, City of Newburgh. Kate Moulton, New York State Jim Forrest, Chief Port Jervis Engineer. John Ravello, Village Manager, Village of Walden. Warren Bennett, OCTC staff. Jessica Ridgeway, OCTC staff. And on the line, we have Al Fusco, Captain Corliss, Rob Parrington, County Transit, um, Sandra Jobson, Travis Ewald, uh, Harriet Lewis, Zach Coleman, uh, Orange County Planning. I also have three numbers. Um, one number ends in 1149. Who is this, please? That's uh, my Shigurubu, village of Kiri's Joel. Um, I have another number ending in 8611. I think that's me, Sandra Jobson. Thank you, Sandra. And I have a number ending in 6940. Okay. 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 Um, Next, I'd like to go on to opportunity for public comment. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to comment? Okay. Hearing none, I will move on to um, acceptance of the meeting transcript for March 1st of 2022. Uh, everyone should have had that in their packet. Uh, are there any comments or questions on the transcript? I didn't print that out. Um, so it should have been sent out with the meeting materials. Okay, a motion to yeah. accept the meetings. Okay, a motion to accept. I'll ask for a second. Second. Jason. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is Orange County Transportation Council Resolution 2203. Uh, 
This is a resolution allowing video conferencing for our policy board meetings. This is a matter that was discussed um, at prior meetings, and I'm just going to uh, take a moment to go through some of the highlights. So, uh, public officers law 103 a 2 authorizes public bodies to conduct meetings using video conferencing technology as long as there is a quorum is physically present, uh, which is the case here uh, today. Uh, resolution was passed back in at the June planning committee meeting uh, recommending that we adopt such a policy. Um, based on feedback from the transportation council members. Language was included to further define virtual presence as only under extraordinary circumstances to continue to promote an in person attendance at our meetings. Um, so it states a member of the board may attend virtually by video conferencing only under extraordinary circumstances, such as disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, other unexpected factor, including uh, precluding attendance. Um, the planning committee and some committees uh, can continue to meet virtually and in person. Uh, and we had forwarded an updated resolution to the members for review. And this resolution will stand until we have an opportunity to update the OCTC operating procedures. So that is an explanation of the resolution. Um, Just a question on. Yes. Or it must be physically present under A. It says a minimum of five with the numerical number eight there. Is that a typo? Oh, yes. That is a typo. Yeah, we need eight members present. All right. So thank five you. gets crossed out and eight gets written in? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's good catch. Um, so I am. Uh, I'm accustomed to asking for a motion and second. Uh, for discussion, I know the policy board, I think just, uh, I don't know if you've done it that way, but if everyone's okay with that, that's what I'll do. So I'll ask for a motion on the resolution. So I'll move with the change. Second. In a second. Okay. Then, um, so we have a motion in a second on the resolution as amended. So I'm going to call the question on the resolution as amended. All those in favor of the resolution. Of amending, excuse me, of amending the resolution. So, yeah, all those in favor? All right, all right. Okay, are there any objections to amending the resolution? Okay, seeing no objections, I'll now call the question on the resolution as amended. So, all those in favor of voting for the resolution as amended? Aye. Uh, uh, anyone opposed? Okay, so the motion carries. Um, I'm I'm sorry, Jacob. <laughs> I should have asked for a discussion. <laughs> yes, uh, I should have. Uh, is, did you have any? I, no, no, not for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, I got lost in that moment. So, you're absolutely right. Um, so, the next resolution, I'll, I'll read it. So, it's an Orange County Resolution 2205 Distribution of Federal Transit. Oh, and back. Oh, resolution 2204, uh, Orange County Transportation Council fiscal year 20 to 24 transportation improvement program amendment 20-13. So this time we're gonna, I'll ask for a motion in a second, and then I will ask for discussion. So a motion, Jacob, a motion, second. Mike? Okay, is there any discussion on the resolution? Lauren, are there any highlights that you would want to cover? If not, this is the amendment. Is this the amendment one we're talking about? Yes, yeah, this is. Yeah. It's a packet. This yeah, yes. OCTC amendment 20 13. It, it has 10 actions, um, four new NISOD projects, additional funding for three city of Newburgh bridge projects, reduction of the OS system bridge block funding in FY22. And then adding the OC Orange County Bridge project that was funded through Bridge New York and a funding shift for an MTA project that does not impact the, um, the cost allocation. So the funding has been switched. 
Um, this went out for 14 days of public comment. It received one public comment, which I will now read into the public record. Do I need a motion for that? No, I can go right. So this is from Gedalia Zegedin on the addition of pin 8065.12, preliminary engineering and environmental analysis activities, upgrade of New York State Route 17 to Interstate 86. Comment one, in the Pell process, DOT received multiple comments and letters from many elected and governmental officials, government officials asking that the final design choice should be adopted as interchange 130 option one plus and two plus. My support of this TIP amendment is conditioned on this vital point. Comment two, I understand that this EIS process funded by this PIN may be, may be taking up to three years to complete. Please try to have this process accelerated to be it as quickly as possible. Also, I suggest considering specifically breaking out and accelerating the interchange 130 option 1 plus or 2 plus component as a standalone project, similar to how interchange 131 was done as a standalone and was completed from start to finish in less than three years. Comment three. The state capital program has allocated 1 billion for this project, but this project may cost more than the this amount allocated. I, therefore, request that the selection process be uh, of what component of this project may be built in the first phase, including the 1 billion, should be decided by DOT with input from the OCTC and local communities. Priority should be given to a disadvantaged communities and environmental justice communities. So with that, um, the comments were forwarded to the project sponsor, who is nice thought. And before we give nice the opportunity to respond, I don't know, Kadalia, you're on the line. If you wanted to add anything. Uh, I did have communication, uh, with, with, uh, DOT, uh, on this issue. And, uh, because there's another project listed, I think the one listing before this is for interchange 122. Uh, yeah. and I was. I was raising the issue if if interchange 122 is not a part of this project, and it seemed odd that here we're doing an EIS for the entirety of the 17, but at the same time, we're already approving $85 million of funding for one component of the project that is only now being studied. And according to DOT, uh, project interchange 122 was already done on a separate EIS uh, and it's, a, it's already a phase two of a project. So in light of that, uh, ACTAC should be aware that this EIS uh, actually is not for the entire 17 road widening uh, and all the interchanges because interchange 122 is already accelerated far beyond the EIS stage. Uh, and to that, I would just add, if there is ways to accelerate other components uh, during the course of uh, the three years EIS, uh, Interchange 1 TD should be next in line for acceleration. Uh, and if uh, it's nothing is accelerated, I guess everything is gonna be studied at the same time. So basically interchange 131 and 122 is excluded from the next $20 million that we're allocating for an EIS. Okay. Um, any further discussion on the resolution? Is it, is it possible just to run through them project by project just to remind everybody of the funding, what the changes are? Sure. Yeah. So the first project is NISOC and 806259, and that's the resurfacing of Interstate 84 from Route 208 in the town of Montgomery to the State Route 32 interchange, and that's adding uh, 8.8 .8 million, and that's an offset from uh, another nice up pin on the Mid Hudson South TCC tip. So that does not impact our local program. The second project is another nice up project, 806510, and this is um, the project that uh, Mr. Zegadin just mentioned, Route 17 at exit 122, stage 20 or stage two, 
um, an interchange reconstruction. Um, and this is um, adding the project and it will use onto the OCTC tip. Um, it will use statewide funds. It will not impact our local program. Um, it is 85 million. The um, preliminary and detailed design is being scheduled um, for this fiscal year 2022 with um, construction in the next fiscal year 2023. The next project is the NISOT pin 806512 preliminary engineering and environmental analysis, activi analysis activities upgrade of New York State Route 17 to Interstate 86. That is adding this project, this pin onto the OCTC TC, OCTC tip. Um, it will be using statewide funds. It does not impact the local program. So it's 20 million for the preliminary design. And as Mr. Zegadin said, it's the EIS. Um, for pin 876139, City of Newburgh, it's Lake Drive over Crusade Creek Bridge replacement. Um, and this project is had requested additional funds um, that is being offset from the block pin um, 8 BLK 2 So this is the off system bridge fund. Um, and then city of Newburgh pin 876140 Walsh Road over Jose Creek Bridge replacement. This is another city of Newburgh bridge project. Um, this also requested um, funds and is being offset from um, the off system bridge block fund as well. So that will um, eat up the entire fiscal year 2022 block in. We haven't had additional congressional funding too, right? There's, no, there's uh, another. That's this next one. It's another. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, pin 876157, which is Lake Street Route 32 over Quasse Creek Bridge Rehabilitation. Um, and this project received additional congressional earmark funding, um, and this will not count against against the targets. Um, it has its own separate funding. Um, the next is pin 876267, which is an Orange County bridge project. This was um, awarded with Bridge New York funding, so it does not impact the local program. Um, pin 8... 81636 Route 9W Storm King Mountain Drainage and Median Barrier Improvements in the town of Cornwall. This is being added for detailed design in fiscal year 2022. Um, it's using state funds. It will not impact local, the local program. Um, the next is PIN 882399, Newburgh Beacon Ferry Service Operations. Um, so they're switching the... Um, funding for the SDG flex um, and MTA has requested that be moved to a pin M8030101 on the Mid Hudson South tip and it's being backfilled with MTA funds. Uh, finally, pin 8BLK02, this is the off system bridge block funding and you can see it's reduced um, by 0 0.964 million. Um, which is the offset for the two city and neighborhood bridge funds. Thank you. So with that, uh, any discussion? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution? Aye. I, I would like to ask one question, though. The 85 million and the 20 million that you said is from statewide funding, is that coming out of the one billion dollars for the 17 improvement uh, that was part of the uh, this year's capital plan or this funding is coming out from another part and there is still a billion dollars available for the 17. I have to ask that of COT. Yeah. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, that um, the intent is that is taken out of that's been made available from the one billion. So 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 going going forward, uh, there's going to be only nine hundred million available uh, for doing all other DOT uh, seventeen project. Yes, and based on the estimate in the tell, 
um, we we should be fiscally still in very good um, shape based on the um, estimates that came out of the Pell. I see. I see. Okay. Even though the estimates did not include the current economic climate and the uh, uh, cost of uh, construction and cost of interest rates and cost of uh, everything associated. So the value of the dollar uh, is less now than it was when we did the Pell. So just take that in consideration. Well, I know. Thank you. I mean, we're feeling that significantly, even from when we just did our capital program update just this past fall. Um, you know, we're seeing that. So, but, you know. But okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure I finish. Uh, so I asked for everyone in favor. Uh, was there anyone opposed? Okay. So resolution passes. So next resolution is 2205. It's with respect to the distribution of federal transit funding from the American Rescue Plan Act in the Mid-Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area. I'll ask for a motion. Um, Jacob, second. I'll oh, second. Okay. Second uh, discussion. Or Lauren, you want to provide just a brief overview of this? Yes. Yeah, so on March 11, 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, or ARPA, was signed into law. Um, so the Poughkeepsie, Newburgh, New York, New Jersey urbanized area was apportioned a total of 66 million four hundred eighty thousand, approximately. Um, and that amount was further apportioned by an agreement between the states of New York and New Jersey, um, where New York received just over 65 million and New Jersey received just over a million. Um, so the three MPOs within the TMA, which is um, the Dutchess County Transportation Council, Orange County Transportation Council, and Ulster County Transportation Council, will be um, adopting these resolutions to further distribute the um, ARPA funding, um, it's 5307 funds. Um, and I believe Orange County is receiving um, 4,426,000. Um, and this was discussed at the June meeting. We're keeping um, just about 28 million unallocated for the time being. Any uh, discussion? I just want to make sure it's on the record that we're getting less money than Dutchess County and Orange County. I don't like it. That's all. But why is the remaining money unallocated? Why, why, why aren't they allocated? Just under an problem? I can explain that a little bit. The, um, there were the unallocated funding is being set aside so that potentially the, the TMA can do a call for projects. Um, otherwise, that funding traditionally just would have uh, gone directly to or be set aside directly for Hudson, Hudson Transit, Leprechaun, and Adirondack. Uh, they still have uh, CARES funding that they have to draw down, and so the feeling amongst the MTA space that within the TMA, based on our discussions, was that we should hold that money for the time being. Uh, look for opportunities for transform transformative projects within the re region and uh, do a call for projects. And if those operators do need the funding, it's still available. It's still available to them. A lot to allocate to them if they still haven't drawn down. Yeah, thank you. So with that, I'll, uh, I guess I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next resolution is very similar, but it's dealing with the CRISA funding. So it's Orange County Transportation Council Resolution 2206, distribution of federal transit funding from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, CRISA, in the Mid-Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area. I'll ask for a motion. Jacob, uh, a second. Mike, uh, discussion. Again, is the distribution amongst the county based on population? It's based on um, some of the distributions. It's actually based on ridership. Mm -hmm. um, so, so if we get 
more money for Orange County to make more stations, more trains, we'll have more riders to get more money. Correct. So we're being penalized for that. Nice. Does that, does that just happen? They run the transit system. They do. Right? Yeah. Actually, which is not what we do. Yeah. They, they should do. Yeah. That's what we get more money. We had talked about that. Correct. They were going over the plan. So it is, yeah. I won't, I'll try not to go off on too much of a tangent, but it, it is something that we are uh, currently exploring is doing a countywide transit feasibility study. We have funding set aside in the UPWP for that purpose, but I don't want to get. No, no, too far down there. But the, the point's well taken. Um, and we are exploring, like, currently we're going, Rob will speak to it in a few minutes. We're doing a uh, study for the redesign of the Middletown bus uh, transit service, uh, doing a similar study for Newburgh. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we're looking for those opportunities to enhance public transit throughout the county. And yeah, we're going to do an orange link for the role. You can ride anywhere in the county. You can hop on and hop off. You know, link schedules through an app. You talked about it in the subcommittee on transportation. So no, that was still moving. That's something that's being explored, and we have the Trans and Orange website, which is kind of a gives the illusion of being in one consolidated system, uh, but does make it easier for riders to connect to various points. But yeah, that's something the feasibility study will just be just looking. The shape at. of Dutchess County, the way they go up and down is. They have the advantage over us the way our county shapes. Yeah, we have there are there, yeah, there are differences. We have, we have ways that would be helpful to have it. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so any, any further discussion on that resolution? Just the um we received an email from DOT oh, that where nice. um currently it states um and of course this paragraph one, two, three. Four, six. So the sixth paragraph um, in resolution 2022-06, it says uh, FTA section 5307 slash 5337. Um, this was based on a table. Um, we were using the same resolution for all three MPOs. We got um, clarification that it's to only add in 5307 into the resolution. So we'll take out the 5337 mentioned in this resolution. So I will ask for a motion to amend the resolution. It actually, shows up in two places. So in the, the final, the final one. In the final. Three places. And three, if uh, yeah, and then the attachment. Oh, okay. It was resolved. So I will ask for a um, an amendment to strike those references to fifty three thirty seven. So moved. A second, Mike. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the amendment? Uh, aye, uh, aye. Okay. Then I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution as amended? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. One last resolution. So. Oh, OCPC resolution 2207, an amendment of the fiscal year 22 23 unified planning work program. I'll ask for a motion. Oh, Jacob, a second. Oh, sorry. Good, thank you. Um, so we have a motion and a second discussion. I'll ask Lauren just to provide a brief overview, uh, if you would, please. Yes, yeah, so we adopted the 2022-2023 um, Unified Planning Work Program on March 1st, 2022. Um, there's two sources, funding sources for the UPWP. There's planning funds, FHWA PL funds, planning funds, and FTA 5303 MPP funds. Um, so when we adopted the UPWP, it was an uh, a get, uh, estimate. Um, FTA finalized those allocations um, and we actually got more money. So we previously estimated 132,000 approximately, and we're now receiving 167,000. Um, so we um, presented the amendment um, at the last planning committee meeting. In addition to the uh, additional F 5303 funding, we also added a task. Um, the OC Roadway Safety Action Plan task, and that was offset by the Route 17 M6 corridor study for 150,000. 
Um, we also added funding to the track account program um, to cover the purchase of new counter equipment, which was offset by a GIS task and pavement management task. And then we added additional funding to cover that equipment purchase, and that offset was by in the contractual line for 50000 um, so this went out for set 14 days of public comment and did not receive any comments. Any discussion amongst the members? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Carries. Uh, new business? Yeah, no new business. Uh, reports. Um, the TAP CMAC awards were announced. Yes. So, so I'm going to turn it over to Lauren. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, the town of Crawford received um, a TAP award for this 20 last round of 2021 TAP awards. Um, so hopefully you'll, Niza will reach out. Uh, Charlie, if you're on, hopefully Niza will reach out to you about that. Um, and um, if you've not seen the awards, they are posted on the NYSAT nice website. Yeah, I'm familiar, familiar with it. It's a project we applied with them before and we reapplied and uh, and we received it. So uh, a great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna next go uh, discussion on the Middletown bus network redesign. Oh, we have the, no, the, there's a notice of funding opportunity. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. There's a new the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, there's a bunch of funding programs that they're slowly releasing. If you have not signed up for those, I highly, highly recommend signing up for those notifications. Um, the newest program that was announced was the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Program, RCP. Um, so the fiscal year 2022 RCP program um, are to be awarded on a competitive basis, national competitive basement basis for projects that reconnect communities by removing, retrofitting, or mitigating highway and other transportation facilities that create barriers to community connectivity, including to mobility, access, or economic development. The variety of transfer, transformative solutions to knit communities back together can include high quality public transportation, infrastructure removal, pedestrian walkways and overpasses, capping over highways, linear parks and trail connectors, roadway redesigns and complete streets conversions and main street revitalization. There's up to 190 million um, available for this first round um, with 50 million dedicated to planning grants and 145 million dedicated to capital construction grants. Applications are due on October 13th, 2022 through the grants program, um, which I've heard takes about a month to sign up for and be approved for. So if you are looking for these bill grants, sign up it takes a while so don't wait last minute you might not have a chance to um, apply and there's also a webinar thursday july 14th at 12 to cover this program by fhwa very good is the county applying are you guys applying for this the planning department for you mentioned the buses and transportation um we're gonna look into we're gonna look into it i'm sorry Real trails count as well Pedestrian connections. It could be. Um, from what I can see, you know, just putting it in context, it's 195 million across Next, the country. Yeah, so it's going to be a very competitive job. program. Um, and uh, but we'll, we'll certainly look for opportunities. I mean, if our local sponsors, you know, have a project in mind, we're willing to take a look at, into it. Uh, see how we might be able to assist. Um, I, you know, for the for the buses, I think, you know, we'll probably be looking, continue to look more through our traditional funding sources uh, for that. But if there's a unique project, um, you know, that comes to mind, it maybe doesn't fit one of the more traditional funding sources, we will definitely open to exploring it with you. Um, so with that, um, Rob, now you're on. Uh, Middletown bus network redesign. I'll ask Rob Parenton to uh, bring us up to date on that. Yeah, uh, earlier this spring, uh, like the end of May, beginning of June, I think it was, we kicked off the redesign to look at the fix route in the Middletown and Walkill area. 
um, what we call Middletown Area Transit Service. We had our first working group meeting last week, which uh, Jacob was and some others in the room were able to attend to start getting some feedback. Um, we know from doing some of the other studies we've done in the county that there was a need to look at the routes in Middletown and uh, adjust them to be more modern. The routes are kind of antiquated the way the system runs. So that's our goal and we have an aggressive schedule to get it done and uh, get the routes figured out by October is our plan so that next year we can hopefully go to bid depending on, uh, we need to go to bid regardless, but if there's a need for capital, we may have to build in some time to purchase vehicles. We have uh, funding for buses, but it takes time to make buses. So that can take, these types of buses take a couple of years to make. So we'll see how it plays out, but that kicked off, uh, that's ongoing. And like I said, the working group meeting kicked off last week. Rob, thank you. Yeah, it was a productive meeting, I, I thought. Yes, good, good so discussion. The concept is you're going to be adding more routes, so you need more buses. Is that what? It may. Oh. Oh, well, sorry, we could be adding more routes. We have to. We have to see. We also, <clears throat> if there's more routes added, it could be a phased approach until we get the buses in place. But uh, folks may remember this happened in Newburgh when. Uh, the county did the uh, Newburgh area land use and transportation study. The recommendation came out in like 2011 that we needed additional buses. The plan was compared that we needed new routes that included additional buses, but we couldn't actually launch that until it was the end of 2014 when the buses were online. So we just have to, we're mindful of that. Um, we just have to see how it plays out in the coming months with what we think the re recommendation show as far as service levels. Thanks. Yeah, we do think there will be some adjustment to the to the design of the system. So it's currently like a spoken hub uh, system with it was designed when you know Middletown was the center. Downtown Middletown was the center of the community before the gallery and other businesses. So it may end up being in the redesign of course we don't know the answer yet but uh one thing that will be explored is whether there should be a trunk line line long to 11 and then kind of hubs at either end uh, to provide better connectivity and service so uh, we'll be looking at all options and uh so that's finally underway and then um i know rob uh there, there's some interest uh more pressing uh, probably offline here but uh Newburgh's interested in, um, you know, with the casino opening on is it? November, we'll, they're open. it's going to be open in November. So after this meeting, we can circle, circle back and uh, have a conversation with them. I, I explained that we're, you know, in our schedule, we're about a year off from the Middletown uh, or Newburgh area uh, bus network redesign. But uh, we could talk a little bit about that uh, after this meeting. I think. Yeah. So we'll set something up. Uh, any other member reports? Staff. No, I have my. I'll uh, I'll get to that. That's. Um, and then I will be. Uh, anything else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, meeting schedule. Oh, I know cool. usually the summer is yeah. late on meetings. We have yeah. so much going on, and so we've been, um, NYSAT's reached out. We need to adopt an amendment with the 5310 projects, um, which are still in draft form, but um, by the end of July. So um, we'll look to have a, or by the beginning of August. So we'll look to have a planning committee meeting at the end of July. Um, we also need to discuss the, um, Kind of proper kind of funding request um so we need to figure that out and then also um the village of curious joel has submitted their cmac application for the park and ride so we can discuss that as well um and then um so we have a doodle poll which i will send a follow-up for the end of july um so if you could please respond to that as soon as possible and we'll set a meeting date up you do not need to be in person for this it will be virtual and in person um, so I know it's last minute. Um, so August 9th, we'll be having a back to back planning committee meeting um, to tentatively adopt the 5310 amendment. 
We also have to introduce uh, some performance measures for the CMAC um, performance measures. Um, yeah. What time would that be? I don't know yet. Um, this all just happened. Um, so we can do 10 or one um, since they're all back to back, whatever I guess is more convenient. Um, for the July, there's a bunch of different times. Um, but um, for August, 10 or one, whatever works for more committee members, because that has to be in person, a quorum. Um, and then the September, we'll need a back-to-back -back planning committee because we have to adopt the CMAC measures before October 1st. Um, and we also need to introduce the final draft tip before that goes out for 30 days of public comment. And then we're um, tentatively adopting the um, tip at the October 11th policy board meeting. Um, and so this timeline got shifted back because we are tied to NIMTIC through the air quality conformity. And we cannot go with a tip without going with the air quality conformity. We can't go to air quality conformity until we have NIMTIC submissions. So we're just kind of waiting. Um, so we hope to have those by September 6th um, or 7th. That, that September 6th or 7th is actually the first Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, if we did it the second, we would not meet that 30 days of public comment uh, period timeline. So we are shifting that up. Um, so all this will be sent in an email, um, but a lot of a lot of meetings. A lot, I know everyone likes. So we're changing the 13th to the 6th or 7th. Yes, sure. and there's going to be a July meeting. Yeah. Um, so just changing the calendar. Yeah, um, and we'll all send out save the dates too. Um, like it's finalized. You guys have that on your calendars. So um, please, once we send emails, just please respond if you're coming in person so we can track that and make sure we have quorum. Great, she had it. Hopefully, Gary got to that. Get it done. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll ask but motion to uh, adjourn. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> 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 You're good.